Welcome to Total Vitality. Thanks so much for joining us. I am super excited today because I have a very dear friend of mine who's come all the way from Hong Kong to be with us. And she is a fabulous mum. She's a great wife and she's also a brilliant living foods chef. That means she creates the most mouth-watering, delicious recipes. And she's with us today. Thank you, Priscilla, so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here, Julia. So earlier today, Priscilla, we went down to Arate at Caring Bar, which is run by Sue Pryor. It's a gorgeous little organic shop in Caring Bar in the Sutherland Shire in Sydney. And you're originally from the Shire, aren't you? Yes, I did. Yep, I'm a Shire girl. It's so nice to be back home. Yeah, there's definitely no place like home. I absolutely love it here. So tell us a little bit about your background and how you became a healthy foodie. So it basically started after the birth of my son, who's now almost four. Um, and I just remember coming home from the hospital one day after he'd been diagnosed at four months of age of, um, as an asthmatic, which was quite early to be diagnosed as such. Um, and I just remember coming home with like this plethora of eight different medications and, and sitting them all out on my coffee table and just being completely overwhelmed at the fact that I'm gonna have to put, um, you know, via my pediatrician who um, was obviously trying to advise me the best way he knew how, I have to put all of these medications in my brand new baby's body and it just didn't sit right with me. So that's when I really started to delve into nutrition and started to delve into, you know, how can I possibly feed my child the absolute best foods that this planet has to offer. Now most parents would be totally aware of the challenges they face when trying to incorporate even a little bit of healthy food into their family's meals. How have you found it making that transition to make a lot of healthy foods for your family? It's, it's been really, really wonderful. Um, you know, my, my husband started out as being Mr. Meat and Potatoes. <laughs> and I remember when I started uh, making all these different raw foods for him, he sort of said to me, if, if food tastes this good, then I'll eat it. <laughs> it's basically, um, you know, making sure that you, your food tastes delicious um, and you're making, you know, simple, fresh, well, I like to make simple, fresh, delicious, organic uh, foods, uh, basically from very fresh whole food ingredients and just to keep things simple and not to be too complicated. Even though I love teaching gourmet raw foods and things like that, um, at home we like to keep things super simple as well. So what are your non-negotiables when it comes to diet? Okay, I love this question. My non-negotiables when it comes to diet. Um, some of the things that I just could not give give up anymore would be raw foods in general, would also be um, green juices and green smoothies because it's just too easy to get so much nutrition packed into, you know, one green smoothie. Um, I also love to incorporate some superfoods and things like that, but mostly just fresh, living, um, organic, beautiful produce, you know, and, and that's seasonal. As, as much as possible as well. Mm. So they're sort of my non-negotiables. Priscilla, you always have an amazing energy, but now you're in your third trimester and you have, you have this amazing glow about you. Tell me, how do you keep so healthy and vibrant during your pregnancy? Um, just keep it simple. Uh, I really love incorporating, like I said before, green juices. It, it's, I have a huge mason jar glass every, every day, every morning. Um, green smoothies, uh, just keeping, keeping it simple. Lots of sea vegetables. I love fermented foods as well. Um, sauerkraut and you know, probiotic rich foods. Um, not so much kombucha, but more so um, uh, different sort of uh, fermented drinks, uh, rejuvelac, and, and, and there's other ones as well that I love to make with coconut water, like a coconut kefir as well. Just really making sure that every meal that you have, that you sit down to, is fresh, is vibrant, is possibly seasonal, possibly organic, um, and it's just loaded with as much nutrition as possible, and you'll just feel wonderful. It wasn't that way when I began. Um, my pregnancy because I, I couldn't drink, for the first six weeks I could drink green juices and green smoothies and then it just turned. And this happens to a lot of women, this is quite normal and natural, um, where I just didn't want to have anything to do with salads or green juices and I just want to be completely honest and realistic. Um, so I just, uh, at that point in time I dived into sort of more carbohydrates, more cooked veggie meals and then when my body wanted it again, I just slowly started reintroducing the green juices and smoothies and, and a lot more raw foods and it's been a very high raw food pregnancy. So any of those crazy cravings? <laughs> um, 
sure. I mean, I've had all sorts of different little cravings here and there, but I can't say it's been, to be honest with you, I haven't, I haven't really had any bad food cravings. You have um, craving like gherkins and ice cream. <laughs> no, or no really sort of strange food cravings. No, no. Um, the one thing that I did crave was mangoes, and I remember that distinctly um, right through the first two trimesters of this pregnancy. I just love and could not get enough of, of mangoes, especially Australian mangoes, which can be a little tricky living in Hong Kong. <laughs> and durian as well. I really like durian, which is the stinky fruit that a lot of people don't like. Um, I really loved it. It was just creamy and delicious, and apparently it's actually quite good for pregnancy too. So there you go. <laughs> so you're a very busy lady. You run a very successful business in Hong Kong called Authentic Food. Also, obviously, you're a mum and a great wife, so you're very busy. Now, a lot of parents these days are busy, but they tend to go for the packaged foods, the canned foods, the food in jars, all of those processed foods, because they're easy. So what do you do when you're busy? So one of them, Jill, that's such a great question, you know, because it's so true. We all get so busy and there's you know, there's packet food everywhere, there's processed food everywhere, and it's so much more easily accessible um, as whole food meals. But you can actually throw together really, really quick meals. Um, a green smoothie can be very, very satiating and very, very quick to make, super duper easy to clean up as well because you just rinse the blender and away you go. Um, and then there's also, I love to wrap lots of things up in nori, in the sea vegetable nori, raw nori if I can get that. Um, and then a really yummy, delicious dipping sauce with those sorts of things work really well. I often have a lot of, um, a lot of sort of snacky foods on hand as well, especially being pregnant. Um, I usually dehydrate a bunch of crackers and things like that. Um, but, but as far as go-to meals are concerned, I love to do like blended savory soups and things like that as well, um, that are very heavy, satiating, and that have got you know really um, good fats in in it as well. That makes me feel like I'm full and satisfied. So, Luca, your son is now three years old, and I know that he drinks green smoothies, and he drinks coconut water out of a coconut, and he has a lot of other foods and drinks that most kids would like totally turn their nose up at, and all the parents, I'm sure are wanting to know your secret. How do you get the kids to eat healthy? <laughs> um, it, it might have been helpful that I started Luca quite young, but of course for five-year-olds, 10-year-olds and, and parents out there with older children, just try and make the food as delicious and as fun as possible. I find if, if children find that the food is fun or they're in certain you know, little animal shapes or whatever, just getting creative with their food um, is lots of fun. Things like making raw cookies or fruit roll-ups in the dehydrator um, and getting the children involved in the actual food making process is, is just such a joy and it really helps them to sort of um, you know, understand the importance of preparing the food as well um, as eating it. So, and knowing where it comes from. And knowing where it comes from, exactly. I just think it's it's really important to involve them in the whole process because I think that there's been a bit of a disconnect between us and our food and getting the children re-involved um, really sort of sets the stage, I think, for later on in life as well so that they have the tools and the skills to be able to prepare their own food at home using real food. And what are some of Luca's favorite foods? Okay, so he loves it when I make some fruit roll-ups because we do all kinds of different flavors. Um, he likes lots of fresh fruits as well. Um, I think probably his favorite all-time food that I make for him um, would have to be the chocolate mousse, the chocolate pudding, which um, I don't add any nuts in. I just use avocado and it makes the most beautiful, creamy, delicious, um, chocolate mousse and he also loves to drink he has apple juice with a bit of spinach thrown in that's one of his favorite or kale um, and interestingly enough you can't actually taste the spinach and the kale if you just put it in in small quantities and we'll put some cucumber in there and sneak a little bit of celery <laughs> so you can kind of get sneaky you can do things like shots in the glass so that the children don't actually see the green as well if that's off-putting to some some of the older children um, he loves chia seeds you know mixed in with banana and some buckwheat and this is how we start our day and maybe a little bit of gluten-free piece of toast as well. So he does have cooked food as well, but he's, um, he's quite high raw vegan also. But he's not a vegan, I just wanna point that out too. We do have eggs and things like that in the house, yeah. Now I'm not a mum yet, but my biggest fear would be when the kids start 
leaving the home to go to kids' parties, to go to school, to have play dates with other children at other people's homes, losing that control and not knowing what they're going to eat. And I know you yourself have catered for all of Luca's birthday parties and you've created some delicious foods that all the kids love and the parents as well. So how do you do it? How do you create these amazing delicious foods that no one knows are actually healthy? They, they have no idea sometimes that it's raw. And it's really funny, you know, when, when uh, for instance, when Luca turned one and when Luca turned two, um, and even just for his uh, recent three-year-old birthday as well, we, I actually make his cakes using the almond pulp from when I make his almond milks. And so most of the guests have no idea that they're eating. <laughs> I don't want to say old almond pulp, but it's it, it, what, what I do is I freeze it and then I keep it until I have enough of it. And then I go ahead and make a beautiful cake and I flavor it and everything and color it with natural, you know, vegetables or, or, or fruits or whatever. Um, so that's, that's one way of being able to, you know, offer something really, really wholesome at a birthday party. Um, alternatively, there's lots of other things I do. I make kale chips, which the children absolutely love. They think they're really cheesy and yummy and a lot of them have never had that before and when they do interestingly enough their parents can't believe that they're actually they're asking for more of this green chippy thing because it's crunchy and I find that children are very textural and if things taste really really yummy they'll eat it if if things taste too green or sour or spicy or you know some of those um, other types of flavors that that children Sort of steer away from, um, then it, it doesn't really work. But yeah, I try to get as creative as possible and just add in lots of fresh, vibrant foods and also some some dehydrated things as well at parties. But yeah, most of Lucas' parties have been very high raw. And the sushi that I make for the parents, they had no idea that I'd made it with like a parsnip and pine nut rice. And the guys that were there were just they they had no idea that they were eating raw sushi. They thought that it was that that it had actual white rice inside of it. So you know there's some tricks we can we can do. <laughs> well thank you so much Priscilla. It's been an absolute joy having you here, obviously in Sydney, but also on the show on Total Vitality. You're a true inspiration to me and I'm sure to a lot of parents out there. You're looking gorgeous. You've got a wonderful family and I cannot wait to see you again and meet little Bubba as well. Thank you. Yes, we'll definitely be back down here again and see you. Thank you so much. It's great having you. Thank you so much, Julie, for having me. I really appreciate it. So wonderful to see you. Thanks so much for watching Total Vitality. For more videos and for lots of health information, please visit the Facebook page, facebook.com slash totalvitalitytv.